So this is usually the bit where I take a bunch of stuff out of the locker and there's like a really cool montage, but I have nothing to take out because we're talking about Game Pass, which is entirely digital. And also, it has been around for six years. It is the service that has become synonymous with the phrase, the greatest deal in gaming. And rightfully so, it has had a tremendous impact on the way many of us play games. Me included. No, really, it has, it has changed me. Over the years of being a Game Pass subscriber, my relationship with games, how I buy them, play them, and what console I choose to play them on has been dramatically altered. Honestly, it's kind of debatable whether or not that's a good or a bad thing because I think it's a little bit of both. In fact, the whole thing has got me asking, is Game Pass changing how I or how we all value games? When I take a step back and reflect on the past six years, my thoughts are usually always, it's been great. I've never been this versed in games before. I get to try things I otherwise wouldn't and yada, yada, yada. And that is all true. But there's another side to this and no two games better illustrate my relationship with Game Pass than Ghostwire Tokyo and Hi-Fi Rush. And by the way, both of those games are actually by the exact same developer, Tango Gameworks, which is completely Coincidental, really. Let's start with Ghostwire Tokyo. When Ghostwire Tokyo was revealed, it was showcased as a PlayStation exclusive. They had the devs behind the evil within, it was a new IP, it was spooky, paranormal, and fantastical. It seemed, by all accounts, like a Kurt game. However, around the same time it was revealed, Microsoft announced its acquisition of Tango's parent company, Bethesda Softworks, which meant its days as a PS5 exclusive were inevitably numbered. It was only a matter of time until it made its way on to Game Pass. So, despite my interest in the game, I held off. I didn't buy it in the hopes that it would eventually come to the subscription service. As a result, a game that I was actually pretty excited for was shoved to the back of my mind until a year later when it did indeed come to Game Pass. And oh yes, that was a pre-install all right. Now, on to Hi-Fi Rush. During an Xbox showcase earlier this year, Tango Gameworks revealed an all new, hyper-stylized, cartoonishly over-the-top rhythm action game. It looked really cool. And then, out of nowhere, like a Nintendo Direct mic drop, we're happy to tell you that you can play Hi-Fi Rush tonight. That made it suddenly even cooler. The results swept through headlines and blew up my Twitter feed. An absolute slam dunk of a surprise. And yeah, I instantly installed it. But here's the thing, if Hi-Fi Rush had just launched as a regular game at a regular price without the support of Game Pass, I know I would have most likely passed on it. Nothing against it, like at all. I just know that if I had to vote with my dollars, I probably would have put those dollars somewhere else. Maybe even Ghostwire Tokyo. But because it launched on Game Pass, a service that I browse almost every single day, I had nothing to lose but to give it a shot. And you know what? It's pretty good. And you know what I didn't think was very good? Ghostwire Tokyo. Let that sink in for a second. Ooh, and also, another important point that involves both those games is that I haven't finished either one of them. And I likely won't. So, what do I do with this realization? On one hand, there was a game I wanted, waited, installed it, played it for a few hours, and decided it wasn't for me. But on the other hand, was a game I wouldn't have played, but because it was available to me, I did, and end up enjoying it, but I still did not finish it. When I realized this, it had me starting to look a little closer at my overall habits with the greatest deal in gaming. Some of my favorite games are on Game Pass, new and old ones, some of which are from a pre-Game Pass world. Grim Fandango, Paradise Killer, 999, the Yakuza series, while others I got to play because of Game Pass. Norco, Immortality, Hellblade, Gungrave Gore. But the thing is, I realized while I was scrolling through all the games on Game Pass that there's really only a handful and then some that I've actually seen to the end. Otherwise, there is a graveyard of unfinished games on my hard drive. Proteus, Scorn, Tunic, Signalis, The Pedestrian, Pentiment, and of course, Hi-Fi Rush and Ghost Wire Tokyo. 
Or how about the games I installed and just haven't even touched, like Somerville, Ninja Gaiden, and the Artful Escape. Yeah, I don't really feel great about it. Also, I realized that like half these games that like I have installed or from Game Pass aren't actually even on Game Pass anymore. That's how long it's taken me to get around to some of these games or just completely abandon them for, you know, reasons, of course. I'm a strong believer in the mentality that if you don't want to finish a book, then you shouldn't. And similar to books, games require a little more engagement from you compared to something, say, like movies or TV shows. And to me, it becomes more about your time and attention as the measurement of value rather than the actual dollar amount. When I think about my time with Ghostwire Tokyo or even Hi-Fi Rush, would I have spent more time with them, maybe even viewed them differently if I had actually purchased them? I honestly don't know. But it's enough to unravel my entire perception of why I buy and play what I do versus what I don't. Oh, and speaking of when I actually do buy a game, I'm most likely buying it on Xbox because it has become my primary console and I owe that to Game Pass, which is actually maybe really the point here. If I'm measuring success in my time, then well, Xbox has won it because regardless of whether or not I'm playing a game on Game Pass or not, I'm still turning my Xbox on every day, more than any of the other consoles, which was not the case a few years back. In fact, I made an entire video about that and how my perception of Microsoft has changed. To say the least, I wasn't even an Xbox user until Game Pass came along. That's Game Pass's crowning achievement over the past six years, getting people to talk about Xbox and spend time on its consoles. And in the process, it has raised the bar for what will motivate me to actually spend money on a game. It makes me think about the games I haven't played or have not bought in hopes that they will come to a service like Game Pass. Games like the Callisto Protocol. Like Ghostwire Tokyo, there's a lot going for the Callisto Protocol that had me interested. I love survival horror. It was deemed as a Dead Space spiritual successor despite Dead Space remake releasing only a month later. And yet I wasn't entirely sold on it. You might assume that it's because of the review scores, but it wasn't. I actually have an entire video about that that you should consider watching. It was that it didn't seem interesting or compelling enough. It just had me curious at best, which to me is the quintessential sign of a, I'll just wait for Game Pass sort of game. Even just saying that makes it feel like I'm devaluing the games that do launch to Game Pass, which is not the case at all. This is just how my brain works now. So much so that if the Callisto Protocol was on PlayStation's game catalog, Sony's answer to Game Pass, then maybe just maybe I'd actually consider subscribing to a whole other service just to play it. And that in of itself is a messed up situation for me to unpack. That I wouldn't consider playing a game that I was interested in unless it was a part of a subscription service like Game Pass. I would rather pay $15 extra a month to play a game that on paper takes all of my boxes rather than just fork up $70 for a game that I may even potentially love. I at least know that I'm not the only one that's shifted in some sort of way because of Game Pass. After all, PlayStation did make the game catalog the exact same model as Game Pass and has been using it as a means to showcase some cool games like Humanity or even Stray as day one releases for the service. I still love Game Pass and I'm still gonna use it as a means to dabble and experiment and try things because that is what I'm paying for. One way or another, it demonstrates that we are living in a post Game Pass world at the moment and I'm having a hard time imagining a pivot back. You know what? I'm buying the Callisto Protocol.